How to Pull and Read an FMCSA PSP Pre-Employment Screening Program Report. Hey everybody, this is Chris Vernon with Motor Carrier HQ. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to pull a PSP report. And quite honestly, I feel like if you're not using this system, you're a little bit crazy and you're setting yourself up for some potential liability. If you want to know a little bit more why, click on the link below. It'll take you to episode 49 of the Holland Assets podcast where I start a four episode series on hiring drivers. I go through a real doozy of a story about somebody that did not do the proper screening on a driver that caused some serious problems for their trucking company. So take a listen. Before we jump right in, just a reminder that you have to get the person's authorization for who you're pulling the report. The FMCSA requires you to use their form. Here's a link for it at the bottom of the screen, or you can also get it right on the PSP website. It's all over the place. Make sure you get that form filled out, signed, and you keep a copy of it. First thing you need to do is just go to the website, psp.fmcsa.dot.gov. There's an enrollment button. If you haven't already enrolled, I've got a video on how to do that. The link for it's at the bottom of the screen. Once you get here, just log into your account and you're gonna get a disclosure screen. You have to type in your initials. On this screen, you're just certifying that you're using the system for the purposes of pre-employment screening only and you're not deviating from that. So you just click on the agree to terms at the bottom. Another disclosure screen. Eventually, after you've clicked through the million disclosure forms that the, the site has, you'll get to the dashboard. And here from the dashboard, you can see that I'm not requesting these all the time, or you'd have a list of ones that have been requested in the last five days. I haven't done any. So right now, I'm just going to request driver records. Click on the box there. And then from here, you just enter the driver information. Once you've entered all the driver information, you have to click on the disclosure box again. And if you want at this point, you can add another driver. Since I'm just doing one, I'm going right up here to the right hand side. I'm going to submit my request. Then it's pretty simple at this point. You just click the download button and it downloads onto your computer. Now, how you retrieve the download is going to be different depending on what kind of computer system that you use. Now my report pulled in two pages and there's one thing I want you to pay attention to before we really get into the report. If you notice down here in the bottom left hand corner, it shows MCMIS snapshot date. That is the date that the data goes through. So for example, if you have a driver who has a violation on the 29th of May, 2020, in this report, it will show that. But if they had an inspection or something happened on the 30th of May 2020, it's not going to show on this report. So make sure you pay attention to that and the data is up to date. It, they, the FMCSA usually only posts the data about once a month, so it's not uncommon to have about a, a month difference. But if it gets to be much more than that, it, you know, especially if it's more than six weeks, it, uh, they always post at least once every six weeks. You'll notice kind of up at the top, the first thing that you're going to see is a crash summary and then crash details. I haven't had any crashes, so there's nothing on there, but you, you would see that if, uh, if a driver had been involved in an accident. Then below that is going to be the inspection activity for the last three years. And you can see I've had two inspections, one vehicle inspection. So that means one of them was just a driver, a level three, one was a level two. Um, and when you come a little bit further down, you can see that detail. So on that first page, you'll see inspection number one, and you'll see that uh, I was cited for speeding. Damn Indiana speed trap. Then if we go and look at page two, you'll see my second inspection. And on the second inspection, it was a level three, but look at it. Um, I didn't have, they didn't find any violations. So that's actually a good thing because that actually helps your company's CSA scores every time you have an inspection and no violations are found. Then the last thing on the second page is just a summary of the violations and you can see I've just had one violation. That is how you pull and read a PSP report. Hopefully you found this video helpful and interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. Our contact information is on this page. Good luck in your hiring and we'll see you in the next video.